Get back in control with Off the Wagon, adventures in emotional eating, health, and weight loss. Each episode containing fork-sized mindset tweaks, perspective shifts, and lifestyle hacks to get you back on the wagon. Whether it's habit change, emotional eating, addictions, weight loss, willpower, or relationships, there's something here for you. So let's get on the wagon and get down the road to your goals with me, Christy R. Hall. Welcome to episode 20, where today we're talking about how to stop hating and shaming your body. For most of us, dieting is usually an activity that we take on that is born from self-hate, body loathing, and even a sense of general disgust with ourselves and our body. And those feelings create a pain point that motivates us into picking a fast and usually unsustainable weight loss and workout program in an attempt to get us as far away from that emotional pain point as possible, as quickly as possible. As we've talked about before, these large, grandiose, and sweeping changes made quickly on day one are usually really hard to sustain and end up creating their own pain in the forms of hunger and cravings and feelings of deprivation, denial, and neglect. In fairly short order, we fall off the wagon and go back to our old ways of doing and being. And while this is comfortable to us, it ultimately can make us hate our bodies that seem to be working against us and conspiring to keep us in this unhappy place. This, of course, is untrue. Your body is not trying to work against you. It's not trying to keep you unhappy. It's trying to make sure that you survive. And a 24-hour stress, like going on a hugely restrictive diet, throws your body into a panic. It thinks, holy crap, what is this famine? And then it produces images of tasty foods in our heads to try and motivate us to go find food during this time of famine. Of course, you know that this is not an environmental famine. It's a man-made or woman-made restriction in an attempt to lose weight. And of course, losing weight quickly and rapidly also will signal to your body that, holy crap, I need to panic. So while I don't want to go over how to effectively lose weight while not sending your body into a panic, I do think it's important and foundational to befriend our bodies and make peace with them where they are. And I know how hard this is for some of you. And so I want to share some ways that you can stop hating on your body starting today. First, you can stop and ask yourself, Who is dissatisfied with your body? You want to figure out the source of your body dissatisfaction. Is it that you are dissatisfied with your body? Or is somebody else dissatisfied with it? A lot of times someone near us, around us, or in our circle of friends or family is the one who's the most judgmental, critical, or harsh about us. It may be your mother, your best friend, or even your spouse that has ideas on how you should look or how fit you need to be. Knowing and understanding the difference between your own wants and desires and someone else's will help you determine whether your desire for change is coming from you or if some other source outside of you or even in society is the root cause. If you find that it's someone outside of you that cares more about it than you do, make the conscious choice to not take on those feelings. You can attempt to deal with the issue with them if you want to. Most importantly, know that you are the owner of your body. And no matter what anyone else thinks, you get to choose how it looks, how it operates, and what you're willing to do and go through in order to accomplish any body and health goals that you have. In order to boost your self-image, your body image, consider writing down one thing that you like about your body or your appearance every day 
for a month. Keep the list on your phone or on a piece of paper in your purse or wallet so that whenever you start feeling bad about your body, you can get it out and read it. The second thing we want to try and accomplish is stop comparing ourselves to others. And this is the one of the hardest ones that we struggle with. We need to realize, of course, that comparing ourselves to others is like comparing apples and oranges. And this comparison ultimately can eat away at your self-image. If you need to, consider limiting your time on social media, including fashion magazines, um, Hollywood entertainment shows like Access Hollywood, things like that, celebrity award shows, television and movies that emphasize an unrealistic body ideal. It can literally be exhausting trying to keep up with the Kardashians. And unfortunately, statistically, women are the first to log into Facebook or Instagram, notice the perfect body, the carefully orchestrated family, and the folks who seem to have everything. We measure ourselves against others, and then that negative voice starts in on us. Realize that most social media lives are not what they seem, and no one is perfect. So let the fantasy go. Everyone, everyone, everyone wants something someone else has, or to be like someone else. But the truth is that thin people aren't happier because they're thin. I have seen people lose 10, 30, and even more pounds and still dislike their body. I remember when I got down to my goal weight the first time, it was no different. There were no bells, no trumpets ringing out my success. I wasn't magically perfect, and life wasn't instantly incredibly awesome. <laughs> I was still me, and it was still my life. Thin people they have their own problems, which may or may not include body issues, and other aspects of their lives may be a total mess. Accept yourself for who you are and what you are, right where you are. There's nothing wrong with you. And that unending desire to be, do, and have something is interfering with your ability to experience your best life right now. It's okay to want more for yourself, as long as that comes from a place of self-love and self-compassion, and not self-loathing or self-hatred. Body positivity and acceptance is a lot easier once you realize that you are truly and already enough. The third thing we want to do is stop obsessing and start focusing. Instead of obsessing over the number on the scale or how your weight has or has not changed, start focusing on doing the little easy habits and tasks that are really making a difference. In the overall scheme of things, a single donut or a bag of M&Ms isn't going to matter all that much. The problem for most of us comes when we eat the donut or the bag of M&Ms consistently. In order to master your eating habits, we have to find out where the problem is. Keeping a food journal or a diary is great for tracking the nutrients you are taking in. Also be sure that there's a section so that you can write about your feelings. Put your voice on paper as to why you are or are not eating, any cravings you may be having, and what happened to you to put you in that mood. Finally, you could spend a few minutes thinking about whatever it is that got you in that mood and how you can change it, either your situation or your reaction to it. Everyone has to start somewhere, so start small. Make it easy. Make a few small changes and work up to the things that you feel are currently out of your reach. Fourth, we want to focus on how our body functions and not the form that it takes. We focus so much on what our bodies look like that we forget about what they can do. This is where functional fitness and positive body movement forms of exercise can really help. Movement-based forms of exercise like yoga, tai chi, even belly dance or hula hoop, and even expressive dance, and there's a form of exercise called NIA 
They will help you to focus on and notice how your body feels instead of how it looks. Over time, you'll be able to see that a certain pose or movement or stretch is easier or even possible now that wasn't when you first started. So set smaller, short-term goals that you think you can reasonably accomplish. Then work a little bit every day towards them. It may help to keep a journal of what you do. You can track things like how fast you walk a mile or how many pounds you can curl or how many laps you can swim or where you are on mastering a headstand. And then as you work on improving those skills over time, you'll be able to see the progress. If you're brave, take pictures. This may sound totally counterintuitive and completely triggering, but taking pictures at regular intervals can be a confidence booster because over time, you'll be able to see the contrast between the pictures. You'll be able to see the differences that you don't notice during your everyday experience of life. And this will generate body confidence, which will counteract that dissatisfaction. As far as finding a type of movement or exercise that you like, don't be afraid to try something new. It will be worth it when you finally do find the functional fitness that you do like because the resistance to doing it will be lessened. The fifth thing to look at is working with what you have where you are. Don't continue to wear clothes that don't fit you well or that are slouchy in an attempt to hide your bumps, bulges, and curves. Most of the time, they don't do a really good job of hiding it anyway. And we've never really had the range of styles and sizes in clothing that we do now. So my suggestion here is to stop refusing to buy a size bigger if that's what fits you. Stop buying you know, square and boxy and bulky clothing in an attempt to hide your size. And if you're holding on to, say, a pair of size zero jeans that you're very likely to never fit into again, let those go too. Disregard what the tag size says and buy what fits. A good example of this is I was recently in a dressing room where I saw um, a reference between what might be on the label and what was on this particular manufacturer's label. And it said that, you know, a normal label might say size 12, but the size in the label that was on the clothing item was actually 14 to 16. Now that could be a real big um, bummer to your ego if you you know, want to see yourself in a size 12 and believe that you need to be in a size 12, but, but the manufacturer has made a size 12, but is labeling it a size 14 or 16. And it goes both ways. So it's important to not pay attention to what the size says, because that's just an arbitrary number that they're assigning to a size of clothing and buy what fits. Spend some time figuring out what cuts and you know necklines and sleeve lengths and things like that look best on you if you need to make an appointment with a personal shopper most department stores have them and a lot of times they're free or alternatively you can use one of the many online services to get professional assistance on dressing for your body type don't worry about what the personal shopper or the online folks are thinking about you or certain clothes, or anything like that. Finding the right clothes for one's body and style is what personal shoppers do. So when you start dressing properly, it's going to change your perspective on your body because you're going to look better to yourself in the mirror. No matter what your current size is, there are clothes that will flatter your size and shape and work with your body instead of against it. And you will feel so much better and so much more comfortable in your skin when you do this. The sixth thing that we want to do is build a support system and surround ourselves with positivity. Talk to your friends and your family and get their support. Consider online meetings or groups in your local area. Meetup is great for this. 
if you're struggling with a specific problem. Let people know what's going on with you and how they can help. If they like you or love you, they are going to try and want to help you. And if you're not ready to give up on social media just yet, consider filling your Facebook and Instagram feeds with body positive role models. And consider giving compliments to others, especially those who you know are struggling. Positivity breeds more positivity. And the more you compliment others, the more complimentary you'll become to yourself. Not to mention that it trains your brain to look for the positive instead of the negative. The seventh thing that we want to try and do is refuse to let our negative body thoughts bully us into not doing things. A majority of people have suffered with body image issues and disordered eating patterns at some point in their life. It's extremely common. But no matter where you are on your journey and how displeased you are with yourself because of it, that doesn't mean you should be mean to yourself and bully yourself. Everyone feels unhappy about their body from time to time. And changing how you feel can be hard. But don't let those feelings keep you from going places and doing things that you love. Don't avoid the beach or the pool. Don't refuse an invite to a party. Don't not join the gym because of what you think others will think. They'll get over it. And every time you don't allow yourself to do something because of your size or your shape or a number on the scale, you are bullying yourself. By living a full life, regardless of your body image issues, you separate your actions from your feelings, which will help you understand that your feelings don't have to control you. And finally, set aside some time every day just for decompression, self-care, and even motivation. Everyone is busy all the time with work and kids and spouses and extracurricular activities, it's important to not forget about yourself in the process of running around doing your chores and busy work. So set aside 30 minutes a day for yourself to reflect on what you did and what you accomplished. This would be a great time to listen to a motivating podcast or do a guided meditation. In fact, along with this episode, I'm including a link to a body positivity hypnosis session that you're more than welcome to listen to and meditate on. You could also peruse some of those Facebook and Instagram accounts of body positive people that you found interesting. If you just need to chill and offload some of the emotion or stress of the day, you can try the very simple corpse pose or the child's pose as they are very easy and relaxing. Doing TREs, trauma release exercises, will help you release any emotion or tension trapped in the body and should make you feel more peaceful. I'm not a certified practitioner of TREs, but I had it taught to me and it has been very beneficial for increasing my emotional capacity. If nothing else, consider writing in a gratitude journal all the things you experienced that day that you're grateful for. Understand that loving your body is not complacency. It's not permission. I know a lot of people believe that they have to dislike or even hate their body because that's where their motivation to exercise and eat healthy comes from. And while it may be enough to get you started on the journey, it's likely not going to be enough to keep you going. And what's worse is that it locks you into this cycle of dissatisfaction that will erode your self-image and self-esteem. You can, absolutely can, love your body and still treat it as a work in progress. These two ideas can coexist. Instead of saying, I hate my body, learn to love it. It will take time, and I get it. It's not easy. But if you consistently try to apply these habits and tips, you'll be headed in the right direction. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope this has been helpful. 
If you have any questions or concerns or even want to share some tips and tricks that you have, I would love to hear them. You can reach out to me on Facebook at fb.me forward slash coach Christy R. Hall or at my website www.christyrhall.com. Thanks so much and I'll talk to you soon.